Anana is the original Ishtar. She's the queen of heaven and she's a Venusian goddess. She's the goddess of love, but she's also the goddess of war. Her sister, Arishkagal, is queen of the underworld. And the story goes that Arishkagal's husband dies and Anana is called into the underworld in order to observe the funeral rites. Anana adorns herself in her richest and most beautiful finery carrying with her into the underworld all manner of magical protection, magical power, and beauty. She wears a beaded breastplate. She wears her most beautiful lapis lazuli. She wears a jeweled crown and luxurious robes and carries with her powerful items to assist with the difficult descent. As she submerges herself into the underworld, it is said that all sexual activity on earth stops. Anana passes through seven gates leading deeper and deeper into the underworld. And at each gate, she encounters an Anna. Sometimes the Anna are referred to as judges and sometimes they're referred to as mourners. They're a part of a legion or family of spirits who assist the gods in a multitude of ways. And as Anana descends further and further into the underworld, she is met by the Anna at each of the seven gates. At each of the seven gates, she is asked to remove one of her pieces of clothing or accessories or to relinquish one of her magical items. And one by one, she must remove her protective breastplate, her lapis lazuli, her magical amulets, her crown, her robes until she's naked. When Anana questions why she must relinquish everything, she is told the ways of the underworld are perfect and must not be questioned. It is said that the Anna, as the seven judges, afflict Anana with anger, death, and guilt. She was turned into a corpse and hung on a hook naked. She is described as a piece of rotting meat and left to hang for three days and three nights. Anana's faithful minister, seeing that she has not returned after three days, consults the deities for help. The first two deities say that it is Anana's own fault that she has caused her own suffering through her actions. But the third deity is deeply concerned and he creates two genderless helping spirits from the dirt underneath his fingernails and sends these spirits into the underworld to assist. He tasks the helping spirits to appease Arishkagal. Arishkagal is described as being filthy, naked, and twisted in her own pain. The Anna are called to bear witness to the pain of Arishkagal. She cries out in agony, Oh, my pain! And the mourners return, Oh, your pain! And she cries out, Oh, my heart! And the mourners reply, Oh, your heart! She continues to cry out, I have been wronged, I have been betrayed, I have been abused. And they continue to reply, you have been wronged, you have been betrayed, you have been abused. And in this way, Arishkagal names her torments, her pains, her hurt, her agony, her traumas. And in this way, the Anna bear witness, the mourners bear witness for her. When Arishkagal is complete, when she has been heard, when all of her pain has been bore witness to, she permits the genderless helping spirits to return to Anana and to sprinkle her corpse with the food and water of life. Anana's underworld journey is the story of pain that needs a witness. It is the story of acceptance. Anana and Arishkagal are two sides of the same coin. Anana must strip herself of all ego protection. She must strip herself of all outward pretenses of identity. She must become like the dead and allow herself to suffer. And at the same time, Arishkagal merely needs a witness. She only needs her own pain, her own traumas, her own sufferings to be acknowledged. And when Anana is able to come down from the throne of her ego, and Arishkagal is able to be seen for who she truly is and to be acknowledged, for the emotions that she bears, integration happens and balance is restored. As Anana's armor is removed at each of the seven gates, she is asked to bear the pain of her sister. She is saddled with death, with guilt, with anger. And at the same time, Arishkagal is found writhing in such pain. 
It's described as if she is giving birth to torment. The underworld journey is so prevalent in mythology because there comes a time when we all must take an underworld journey. Our own underworld journey can happen naturally when we go through trying times, when we experience death and tragedy or trauma and betrayal. But when we aren't able to fully process those hurts and traumas, we must embark upon an underworld journey of our own accord. Shadow work is a self-initiation into the underworld of oneself. 